What's up guys, my name is Brandon and after several months of leaks, rumors, speculation, Apple today finally released a brand new iPad Pro. And while some of the rumors were spot on, plenty of the rumors and leaks were also wrong. So in this video, we're gonna cover everything you need to know about the 2020 iPad Pro and if you should consider upgrading if you have the 2018 iPad Pro. All right, so first things first, the cameras. So this is probably the biggest leak and rumor that everyone got wrong. So all of the leaks and rumors said that we would be getting a triple lens setup, but we're only getting two lenses. So we have a 12 megapixel wide angle and a 10 megapixel ultra wide angle lens. So we don't get a telephoto lens like a lot of the leaks suggested, but we do get a brand new sensor called a LiDAR sensor to the right of those two lenses there. And the LiDAR, which is basically an acronym for light detection and ranging, is used to determine distance by measuring how long it takes light to reach an object and reflect back. And this is the first time we've seen a LiDAR sensor on any Apple product. So this LiDAR sensor is going to help tremendously with augmented reality. And AR is something that Apple is really focusing on with iOS 14. If you guys watched my big leaks and rumors video, you would know that Apple's actually working on their own AR application and the iPad will be able to take advantage of that. And obviously this LiDAR sensor will play a major, major role in that application. Now this sensor does not appear to impact photo or video quality or anything like that, but we're gonna see when I get my hands on it. Apple didn't really tell us a ton about it in terms of what it can actually do practically in real life. I would hope that it can help with portrait photos and things like that, but I'm not sure yet. I will be covering all that when I get my hands on this next week. Now, as far as the performance, a lot of the leaks and rumors suggested that we would be seeing an A13X Bionic chip on this new 2020 iPad Pro. But of course, Apple being Apple, it's not that, it's an A12Z Bionic chip, a brand new type of chip that Apple is putting inside of this 2020 iPad Pro. And this of course will be faster in every category over the 2018 iPad Pro, which is really just insane to even think about because this thing is just so insanely quick at literally every single task I throw at it. And you guys better believe I'm gonna be doing a speed test between the 2018 iPad Pro and the 2020 iPad Pro just to see how much faster it is practically in real life usage, like playing games and stuff like that. But we didn't get any specifics in terms of how much faster, we didn't get like a 2X or a 3X number or anything like that over the previous iPad Pro, the 2018 iPad Pro. But Apple is claiming that the 2020 iPad Pro is faster than most laptops on the market today. And basing off the last gen model, with the A12X chip, the 2018 right here, and the fact that we have the A12Z now, I believe that statement 100%. Now we also get an eight core GPU in the 2020 iPad Pro, so games and rendering things and everything like that will be an absolute breeze. Editing 4K video should also be a breeze on this iPad, and I will be testing that out with LumaFusion as well. I will probably do a video just you know, editing a 4K video with the 2020 iPad Pro and kind of show you guys how it works and how fast things render. And speaking of video editing and rendering, for those of you wondering, no, we still don't have Final Cut Pro for iPad OS, unfortunately. Maybe one day we'll get it, but as of right now, it's not looking like it's coming anytime soon. Now, as for the display, we're getting the same display that we had in the 2018 iPad Pro. So it's that amazing liquid retina LCD display with the 120 Hertz ProMotion and True Tone. So we're also getting the same sizing as well at 11 inches and 12.9 inches, which this one you're looking at right now is 12.9. Now, an interesting new addition that I'm really looking forward to testing out is the microphone quality. So Apple is saying that the new iPad Pro has five studio quality quality microphones built into the device for quote, capturing super clean audio and the quietest details. Now, the only reason this somewhat excites me is because of how insanely good the mic quality on the 2019 MacBook Pros was. It sounded literally like a professional microphone when you would record from it, and it really just amazed me, and I really didn't even feel like I needed to plug in my external studio microphone a lot of the times, because most of you guys wouldn't even tell the difference. So I'm assuming Apple is doing the same thing here with the iPad as they did with the MacBook, so I'm really interested in testing the microphones out compared to the 2018 iPad Pro and maybe the iPhone or something like that. So really interesting stuff there. And speaking of audio, we also have four speaker audio that automatically adjusts to any orientation, no matter how it's held, like with the 2018 iPad Pro. Now, another thing about the 2020 iPad Pro that a lot of people are going to overlook and not realize maybe until they have it, is that both the Wi-Fi and the LTE are going to be much faster. And that's because we get Wi-Fi 6 support and we also get gigabit LTE support if you get the cellular model. So 
definitely faster in terms of speeds over Wi-Fi and LTE, which is always welcome. Now, as for the pricing, they start at the same prices as the 2018 model. So that's $799 for the 11 inch and $999 for the 12.9 inch. But one thing that has changed is the storage option. So last year, $800 got you the base 64 gigabyte model. But with the 2020 iPad Pro, that storage size doubles and you get 128 gigabytes of storage for $800. And of course, you can go all the way up to one terabyte of storage if you want to. And you can go ahead and order the iPad Pro on Apple's website right now, and they will be available starting early next week. My shipment says Wednesday the 25th. Now, in addition to the iPad itself, we also got the rumored new smart keyboard with the trackpad built in, which turns out to be named the Magic Keyboard. And this thing just looks absolutely amazing. So it attaches to the iPad magnetically, just like with previous smart keyboards, but it has this super cool like floating design that allows you to smoothly adjust it to the perfect viewing angle. And it kind of sits above the keyboard itself. That's why it looks like it's floating. But just the fact that you can smoothly adjust it is just going to be awesome. I think this is going to be a really, really great keyboard that's definitely going to be worth the insane price, which I'll get to here in a second. Now, in addition to the full-size keyboard, which is also backlit, by the way, we get a trackpad just like the one on the MacBooks. And this is going to serve as a way to navigate throughout iPad OS with actual proper trackpad support. So that's right, iOS 13.4 or iPad OS 13.4, I should say, will introduce full trackpad support for the iPad Pro. And Apple says the cursor is, quote, designed specifically for the touch first experience. So basically, we're gonna be able to effectively use both the touch screen and the trackpad on and off, and they're gonna go, you know, work in tandem very well together once 13.4 gets released. We also get support for multi-touch gestures like swiping to go home and switching between spaces and things like that. So this is just definitely going to open up a whole new experience for the iPad and it really makes it more of a laptop replacement than ever before. Now, another cool feature of this Magic Keyboard that some people may miss is that it has an additional USB-C port right on the case itself. And that's also on the opposite side of the USB-C port that's built into the iPad where you charge it. So basically you can charge other devices from this iPad from either direction, which can be very, very handy if you use these USB-C ports, you know, to put it up on a display or to charge an iPhone, whatever the case may be, you can now do it from either direction, which is nice. And Apple also lists the previous iPad Pro models as compatible with the trackpad keyboard. So if you wanted to hook this up to your 2018 iPad Pro, you could do that but I'm not so sure you're gonna want that once you hear the price. Uh, so just as expected, the iPad keyboard is $300 for the 11 inch iPad and $349 for the 12.9 inch iPad Pro. So that's pretty expensive for an accessory, no matter what it is. But as you guys can already tell, it's gonna be a huge addition for a lot of people. It's gonna be a big deal for a lot of people who use their iPad Pros day in and day out. Now, unfortunately, it's not going to be released alongside the iPad Pro. We'll have to wait until May to get our hands on the new Magic Keyboard, but I will be getting the iPad Pro itself next week. So definitely stay tuned for videos on that. Now, if you guys have a 2018 iPad Pro, I probably would not upgrade to the 2020 model just because the differences probably are not going to be enough to justify the cost, especially since your 2018 is likely still blazing fast and probably knocks out every task you throw at it still. But once again, I'm not gonna have a real opinion. I can't really give you guys real advice until I get my hands on my own 2020 iPad Pro and compare the two. So definitely stay tuned for those video comparisons because I will be giving you guys a lot more advice once I have it in here in the studio next week. Now, Apple also released a new MacBook Air today with a starting price tag that is the same as the 12.9 inch iPad Pro, $999. And the big differences in this MacBook Air compared to the previous generation MacBook Air are that it has two times faster CPU performance and 80% faster graphics performance. It also has twice the storage. So just like with the iPad Pro, the base model comes with a 256 gigabyte SSD for the same starting price as the previous gen. And we also get the all new Magic Keyboard that we saw introduced with the 16 inch MacBook Pro at the end of last year, which I did a full review on that MacBook and I absolutely love the keyboard on that thing, love it. And of course, if you wanted to spec out this MacBook Air for whatever crazy reason, you can go up to a 1.2 gigahertz quad core 10th gen i7 processor with 16 gigabytes of RAM and a two terabyte SSD for $2,249, that's right. So just about $150 less than a 16 inch MacBook Pro, which will get you infinitely better performance. So if you're gonna get an Air, go for one of the base models for that price. 
And if you want to spend more, if you want to get you know higher specs on the Air, you may want to consider the MacBook Pro for better performance. The MacBook Air is just not a MacBook you want to get for performance. Now we also saw a Mac mini refresh today, but the only difference with this one is once again, this is like the theme now, more storage. So just like with the MacBook Air and with the iPad Pro, you get more storage. In this case, 256 gigabytes for the same price. And then finally, iOS 13.4 and iPadOS 13.4 will be released next week on the 24th for the public. As you can see, I'm on 13.4 right now, just because I am a part of the developer program. So we did get the GM build today and I actually did make a video on that. But my full review of 13.4 and iPadOS 13.4 will be here next week. So stay tuned for my full review on the software. But anyways, guys, that's pretty much it. That's everything you need to know about the 2020 iPad Pro. Are you guys excited about it? Let me know down in the comment below. I personally can't wait to get mine and compare it to the 2018 just to make a lot of content for you guys and help you figure out which one you should get. I also went ahead and ordered a MacBook Air. So if you guys wanna see videos on the MacBook Air, let me know down in a comment below. I may compare it to my MacBook Pro and I'm definitely going to be comparing it to the 2020 iPad Pro. But anyways, I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up and of course subscribe so you don't miss a ton of new videos coming next week. But anyways guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.